good evil. We're going to talk about money, evil, something that I don't care for at all. Don't care for capitalism either. We're going to talk about all these things because I don't want you to end up like this. I see the dip. <laughs> Dude, I'm refreshing my Robin Hood and my money won't refresh me. Oh, what I just happened? Did a nuclear bomb go off somewhere? I'm, I'm concerned. Yeah, this I mean, this is an opportunity. Okay, it's now at point six. Are you guys oh, no. What is happening? Something what is this happening? Oh, happening? oh no. Um, I'm laughing because it's really this awful. Gonna... This is what happened when someone put all of their money into Dogecoin when it was up at its near all-time high at around six or seven cents. And then it dropped down to almost nothing. And they freak out because they are in the moment and they are gripped by all this stuff. So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about money, capitalism, uh, and then we're going to talk about Dogecoin. But we're also going to talk about stocks and GameStop and that sort of thing. So there's a lot to cover here. And the first thing I want to do is get into uh, just capitalism in general. So we have a basis for understanding. And then once we get toward the end, I'll start telling you, maybe just giving you some ideas about how things work. So, um, you know, once you better understand it, you have a better chance to, I guess, succeed and not make huge mistakes like this and not throw your life savings away. Because I don't want that to happen to anyone in our community. And I know we don't get a lot of hits right now, but hopefully the people who are still watching, who are possibly getting interested in some of these things like GameStop and AMC and all those stocks, but also looking at Dogecoin and all of these things that are memeing, I don't want you guys to go through this. I, I, I want to try to give you some guidelines because I've been in this space for eight to 10 years, the cryptocurrency space, even though I don't talk about it a lot. I barely use a bank anymore because all of my money, uh, whenever I make any money, it goes straight into cryptocurrency. And I don't recommend that for most people, but I do think that I have a better understanding than a lot of people. Prepare to get triggered if you're like a Trump follower who is a lover of capitalism and slavery and whatever other forms of uh, feudalism, I don't know. Get triggered, be prepared, just get ready because, you know, you're you're going to probably have a half brain take that you think is more developed than mine. That's fine. You can talk to me in the comments. Uh, if you are a an apologist for corporations and banks, uh, a libertarian that is, uh, then prepare to get triggered. But um, if you're just someone who has an open mind and doesn't know where their, you know, their politics are as far as money, then maybe... Uh, Check it out and maybe we can learn together. If I miss something or whatever, you can let me know in the comments. So first off, let's lay down the basis for how capitalism worked. Now, you know, the world always was not a capitalist world. And I believe it was, I believe it's Mark Fisher. It might, I thought it was Slavo Zizek, but it might have been Mark Fisher who said that it's easier to uh, imagine the end of the world than it is to imagine the end of capitalism. Well, there was an end to feudalism. And there was an end to the different economic systems that came before capitalism. So way back in the olden days when, you know, capitalism wasn't even a thing yet, there was not a barter economy. There was no economy ever in recorded history, not once in the history of the universe has there ever been an economy where someone would take five chickens over to their neighbor's house and say, hey, I've got five chickens. Will you give me that pig? That never, ever, ever happened. There was just different systems of debt, there were different systems of equality, and there were different systems of trade. But uh, coins and different systems of payment were almost always placed before that sort of trading. That trading happens usually in a later stage when people are very rich, they start trading stuff around. But it doesn't happen with like, give you five chickens for that pair of shoes or whatever. That's never once been recorded, even though they teach that in school without any evidence. So that's not how the economy started and then it went through different you know this economy went through different phases and you always have um whoever's in charge the big boss the central power the lord or the kings weren't even a thing yet but you have the lords right and they basically ensured the safety of a large area and then everyone who was there worked the land and supported the lord but they were a, it was like a mutually beneficial thing you know like the lord's like hey listen all these people who work in all these houses around here, I'll make sure that you don't get killed by marauders or something. And we'll have a little army and stuff. You just make the food and feed us and do the work and we'll make sure you're, you're protected. And then things got bigger and bigger until they're like, okay, we need a, we need a Lord of Lords. We need a King. And then, you know, that we'll skip, we'll skip a bit because this is not going to be a lesson on that. 
Anyway, at some point, they started building bigger cities and stuff, and then people started moving there, and there wasn't a lot of land to work and, and, and whatnot. But then you'd have someone who owned, uh, who, who was getting a lot of business at their bakery and stuff, and they were like, hey, listen, I need someone to come work here. And instead of uh, allowing them to keep the value of their work or, like, keep all the goods that they bake, all the excess and everything, they were like, listen, you come here and you bake a bunch of stuff for me. And I sell all these things that you bake to different people who are traveling and whatever. And at the end of the day, instead of you uh, getting 100% of the value of your work and going home, I'll give you a wage. And so therefore, capitalism was born where someone could sell their labor to a boss. And then the, then the boss can, like, they can benefit from all that by essentially taking all the work that people do and then selling that for more than they're paying them. That's how capitalism works now. You know, you go and you work a regular job now anywhere. They're going to give you $10 an hour, but they're going to be making $15 to $20 an hour off of all the work you do. And you don't get to keep all that. You just get to keep the $10 an hour. Even if you make the company of $100,000, you might get a small bonus. But they keep most of the value that, they, that you produce. I mean, look at people like Jeff Bezos and some of these rich people. Does he do all the work that creates all the value for Amazon? No, he keeps people in his, you know, warehouses employed at, in terrible conditions uh, with terrible work environments, working at, a, at a, it's basically a totalitarian dictatorship, and they have basically no say in anything that the company does. And all the work that they do, the value of that goes to the top, and they just get a standard wage that they can barely live on. That's the capitalism that we live in now. But see, you start getting people who are richer and richer and richer. And once they get to the top, they're like, okay, well, we can only suck so much uh, value out of the work of all these people that we have. We can go all over the world and we can find people to work for, for cheaper and cheaper, but we need more money, you know, because we got to buy shit. We got more, and I've only got four yachts. Like, I only have four yachts, and I've got a son who's got two yachts, and you know, his friend has, his dad just bought him a third yacht. So I've got to do something. What can I do? And they're like, oh, well, let's just start borrowing tons of money. Because when you're that rich, debt is a good thing. There's good debt. And the way that works is they just go and they borrow as much money as they need from the banks. And the banks have to, of course, you know, like say like, okay, you, you're, you're pretty sure you could be able to pay me back. And they're like, dude, I'm fucking rich. I mean, everything I've got, I, I, I borrowed for it, you know, but it's okay. I'll pay you back. And so the banks start making loans and stuff like that. And whenever a bank makes loans, they create the money basically out of thin air. It's the way you think it is, is you think that people come and they deposit all their money in the bank and the bank has a stockpile and then someone comes in and like, I want to build a farm. And they're like, oh, you want to build a farm? That sounds like a good risk that this bank is willing to take. Let's go to our stockpile of all the money from the deposits we have and we'll give you money. No, it's not how it works. The way it works is the bank says, oh, so you're going to do a $100 million deal. You want to buy a $100 million um, mohawk. That's really high, stylish mohawk. You want to buy it. It's $100 million, and it's going to make you really famous, and so you're going to be able to pay us back. So we're going to write down on a piece of paper. We're, never, we're not going to hand you, like, green greenbacks or currency or whatever. We're just going to write down on a piece of paper $100 million. You take this to the guy. He's going to give you a $100 million haircut, then you can go online and be completely famous, right? When they come back to bite them in the ass, they are secured because they are insured by the FDIC, and the government's like, oh no, a bad loan. Well, we have to pay the banks because the banks are so big, if they collapse, it'll do a lot of harm to the economy. So anyway, businesses can go and do these sorts of things where they look at different companies, and a bunch of them will get together all the stocks, and they can, they can pump stocks by just saying, hey, let's all get together and buy this, buy this at the same time and push the price up and you know we'll, we'll all start borrowing money and buying stuff so that prices go up and down and, the, and that sort of thing. And then they can do the opposite like we saw with GameStop where they're like, this is going to fail. So they start shorting the stock being like, listen, the stock is $10 right now, but I promise that I'll buy a million shares of that stock when it hits a dollar. And I know it's going to hit a dollar, so I'll sign a contract saying that I'm buying a million shares but I'm buying it at a dollar. And if they do that enough, they can push the price down. They're betting that it's going to go down, and then someone else finds out they're doing it. And they're like, huh, they're betting on this price to go down. So then everyone got together on Reddit, and we saw what happened with GameStop. Everyone started buying the stock, and it didn't go down. You know, that person signed a contract. They've got to eventually settle up on that short sell that they did. 
And if they can't do it, they're going to lose billions of dollars. Now, what's even weirder is sometimes they do this to uh, companies and they'll short more stock than is available. That's how greedy they are. That's what they did with GameStop. They were doing like 120, 140% of the available stock of GameStop. They were agreeing to buy it at that lower price because they thought it was going to go down. They wanted to push it down. And they can really push companies around like this. And a lot of big businesses uh, on Wall Street will come in and they'll see a company that's a little bit you know, struggling and stuff and they'll get all their friends and they will just tank the price of that and then they'll go in there and pick it apart and be like oh we've got a really good IT department we'll use that we'll buy this little piece of the company and they pull it apart and make a lot of money now when they get really 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 greedy four to seven years every four to seven years in capitalism there's a major crash that's because they get really 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 greedy and what happens is you know like they'll create these bubbles and they'll just have to go to the government and be like help us we did a bad oh god what are we gonna do we printed we, we we i mean we we borrow way too much money and then with the housing crisis you guys should watch some of these um let me just pull up some some of these if you want to see like how money works watch panic the untold story it's an hbo vice documentary and the inside job watch those two They'll kind of give you an idea of what was going on, but the really dumb, I haven't watched this stuff in a while, the really dumb basic summary of this is that they all got together and started loaning way too much money without, you know, verifying. Way too much money for houses and houses. They just started going crazy with these terrible loans, just giving anybody any money they wanted because they realized that if they take all of these terrible loans and put them together into a bundle on paper, then they can call it a, they, they can, well, they forgot what they called it. They called it something, a, some sort of a mutual fund or a bond or whatever. And then they would sell that to other banks. So they had this big ball of debt. It was worth a lot of money. Like, oh yeah, this debt, it's worth $600 million. But we've got all these contracts from people saying they're going to pay that $600,000 back with interest. So you're going to make, or the $600 million, you're going to make $800 million or a, mil, or, or a billion dollars. So they'd sell it to another bank. And then that bank would sell it to another. And then they would swap them back and forth. And this got out of hand, and then as the economy got worse, people couldn't pay off their bills. And all this, this, all this that was going on, it was so big that it wasn't just one company going out of business. It was multiple banks that were like, well, shit. So the government had to essentially just print a ton of money and or, and or grab a bunch of money from taxes and give it to them. So what ends up happening is the poorest among us end up suffering the consequences for all of the speculation that happens amongst the richest of us. And then they have to pay it. I mean, it's like it comes out of the tax dollars. It, it, it deflates the currency or like it's, I'm sorry, it inflates the currency, meaning like they throw a bunch more money and they print like, you know, $100 billion, trillion dollars, you know, like whatever. They print a ton of money and they throw that into the economy. Most of the time it just goes straight into the stocks on Wall Street, which is what we saw all year last year with COVID. Remember Trump always being like, oh, look at the best economy, the best economy I've ever seen. It's the best. Well, what was happening was like the people are suffering and, and prices are terrible. Like, I mean, not prices, but like people's lives are terrible and they're not making any money and they're out of jobs and stuff like that. But he could point at the stock market because they printed more money last year in 2020 than they have in the history of the country. More money in one year versus the couple hundred year history of the country. More money was printed in that one year because that's how bad COVID affected the United States of America. So they printed all this money and did they give it to the regular people? We all know you got like, what, 600 bucks? <laughs> that was like your 600 bucks to fuck off. That's it. Here's your 600 bucks, now fuck off. Most of that money went straight into the stock market. They would give it straight to the hedge fund managers, straight to the stock exchangers, straight to the people at the top so they could prop up these companies and keep them alive on life support and also make them look like they're doing really well. Because when people around the world look, they were like, hey, look at that. America's doing pretty good. So it kept the confidence high and it kept regular people out there spending because they don't see the stock market crashing. They don't see banks going out of business. So they're like, okay, well, I can get, I can get one more credit card to pay all this stuff off. And it generates even more debt. So we're in a pretty big... Um, we got a pretty big problem coming up because inflation is going to be a huge mess. And the fact about the American dollar is now that it's not pegged to anything, they can just print as much as they need and they have to or else the country will completely collapse. Like we can't, we couldn't have stayed 
pegged to anything anymore, like to the uh, gold standard or whatever, it wouldn't have worked. We, we, we have to do this or else the entire economy will collapse. Some argue that that's probably what should happen. Um, might be among them, but it's that, that's going to, a lot of people are going to die. The system is already violence as it is, so a lot of people are dying because of the way the system works. But anyway, that brings me to where we are now, where people are starting to wake up on Reddit and realize that, wait a minute, this is a numbers game. We can get involved. And now's the part where everyone in the free, or everyone who's like really, really loving the free market and thinks that there is a free market, all the libertarians and stuff, are going to get mad with me. There is no free market. There's the illusion of the free market. There is rugged individualism and rugged good old American free market capitalism for the regular folks, for the retail investors, people who use an app instead of going through a giant hedge fund, and for the working class. You guys have just you, the free market. Pull up your bootstraps and work harder. And if you didn't do very well, that's because you're lazy. You got six jobs, get seven jobs. That's, that's where we are. But when these big, big, big institutions and rich people, when they fail, they just go straight to the government and the government gives them a nice big fat handout. So they get socialism, you get rugged free market capitalism. And this is usually done behind a veil and there's like this thing where like everyone kind of knows it, but they don't really talk about it. And now with the GameStop thing, we finally have seen blatant favoring of the of the rich we've the mask is off right now we know that it's the rich versus the poor we it's it's not black people who are the problem it's not the jews with their space lasers god damn jews and their space lasers it's not that god they're, they're probably going to get censored on youtube for saying the word jew because for some reason that's a bad word now jews are freaking cool anyway <laughs> you always have to have somebody to blame right and that's usually what they do. They, they're like, your life is shitty? Well, you didn't work hard enough. And if it's not that, well, it must be the immigrants, and it must be the Jews, and it must be something else. But all along, the system's been rigged against you. And now we've blatantly seen that with the apps like Robinhood, TD Ameritrade, and stuff like that, refusing to allow you to join the free market, buy your stocks. They've completely frozen that just so that they can take care of the billionaires and the hedge funds because they work with Citadel. Citadel does about 40% of their business and Citadel is one of the biggest hedge funds that is directly involved in the shorting of the stock, which is um, a GameStop. So they, uh, Robinhood's probably gonna crash and burn. They've figured that, you know what, we're gonna get sued. We're gonna get huge SEC fines. We're gonna have a congressional in, you know, investigation. We're gonna have all these problems. People are gonna, it's gonna destroy our, public, our PR, our reputation. People are gonna uninstall our app like crazy, but you know what? That's gonna cost us maybe a few hundred million dollars. If we were to um, pretend to care about all the regular people and the retail investors and everyone, if we were to allow people to continue trading, it would tank these companies to the tune of like a hundred billion dollars. So Robinhood is, um, it's so ironic that name. Robinhood is basically just taking the blow for all these huge companies. There's other ways to trade this stock, of course. And I mean, the thing with the American economy is, and, and most economies around the world, is that whenever things go wrong, they just print money and give it to the rich people. 